Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking The Ordinary, a brand you guys know I absolutely adore, but I want to share with you my annual roundup of the top 10 products for The Ordinary for 2022. Usually I'll film this video just before the Decium November sale, so you guys kind of know what is actually worth splurging on. I'm doing it a little bit earlier than usual this year, because I thought by sharing these top 10s, if any of them pique your interest, and you think, yes, I want to grab those while they're on offer in November, it'll give you the opportunity to, you know, run down the other products you might have have in your collection before you then transition onto these. So sit back, relax, and let's talk my ordinary top 10. Now, before we get into this video, I would love to know what your own hot take is on the ordinary products. What would we say you're like top three? Start off in the comments section below and let's get that conversation going. Now, you're probably all completely bored of every content creator saying at this point in videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, that's because YouTube measures success based in the number of likes a video gets. I know that's not healthy and we shouldn't measure our own worth and value based on likes, but it's kind of the YouTube way and we need to play the game. So, I would be so, so grateful if at this point you'd reach down and give this video a thumbs up and a like. The more likes the video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. So until the measure of worth and quality of content changes, we kind of all have to play along and I would really, really appreciate it if you just took the small time out of your day to like the video. Now, with all that being said, shall we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in? I'm going to be going from the product in 10th position through to the ding, 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 holy grail pole position product. And in at number 10 is the only non-serum of this collection, and that is the Ordinary Natural Moisturising Factors plus Hyaluronic Acid. Now, I don't personally reach for this moisturiser day in, day out. I formulated my own about 12 months ago, and that tends to be the one that I use most consistently. There's also some other amazing and drugstore affordable moisturisers on the market. But the reason this is coming in 10th place is because I still think if you're shopping with The Ordinary and you want a moisturiser that just kind of gets it done, moisturises the skin, doesn't contain too many active ingredients that, you know, could work against anything else in your skincare routine or cause irritation, this is kind of where it's at. They now do the larger size, which was introduced, I think that was introduced this year, which means you get a little extra value for your coin. And you know what? It's a great one to have in your collection as a standby for those days where you just want something really simplistic but hydrating. The natural moisturiser moisturizing factors really does do it. I've left a link to this product as I have all the ones mentioned in today's video in the description box below. So it's there for your convenience if you want to read about the ingredients, some of the reviews, the price point wherever in the world that you live. Don't forget there is a sale coming around the corner in November but even without that sale price the ordinary is still really really affordable and so whether you buy now, you wait till November or you give it a firm pass everything's there in the description box for your convenience. Now, in ninth position is this product. This is the Ordinary Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion, the only retinoid from the Ordinary that's featuring on this list. If I'm totally honest, the rest of the collection, pretty pants. I think it's quite confusing because they have different v retinoid versions, they have different concentrations. It can kind of be a minefield to just really like work your way through and work out which is the best for you. To kind of simplify everything down, just buy this one. <laughs> it kind of works for all skin types. and um, It's ground active, so it won't be as sensitizing as some of the other ones. It won't trigger as much dryness, redness, and irritation. It's in a really nice hydrating emulsion. So again, gets around some of the issues people have with vitamin A derivatives and retinoids drying out the skin. It beautifully, beautifully works with all other products in your skincare routine, so it doesn't peel, it doesn't ball up, and it doesn't peel. Um, and I just find, you know, it sinks in like that, which is not something that can be said from the other oil-based retinoids that The Ordinary offer. This, for me, is just streets ahead, and I explained, well, I broke apart The Ordinary Retinoids in a separate video, which I'll link up there. So check that out for more information. But in ninth position, the one and only retinoid that you'll see on this list. Now, coming in in eighth position is this. This is The Ordinary ethylated ascorbic acid 15% solution. This is actually one of two vitamin C's that feature in this top 10. And had you asked me like a year ago, in fact, I looked back to last year's video and there wasn't any of the vitamin C's in it. I've kind of changed my thoughts and opinions on the ordinary vitamin C's throughout 2022. And I think as long as you choose the right ones, actually they can be wonderful additions to your skincare routine. So this one is a 15% concentration, which is like a mid strength, I would say, when you compare and contrast to others on the market. You will get really quick results, but you should get too much sensitivity and irritation unless you have hypersensitive skin. Why I love this is it's ethylated, which means it's super stable. So if you've ever had a vitamin C oxidize on you, which is where it goes that really rich brown color, it becomes a lot less effective. That can be really frustrating because you think, now I've got to throw that out. I've wasted my money. I've wasted product. If you want something that won't do that, super stable, has a really long shelf life and won't oxidize, this is the one that I would reach for. It's really affordable when you look at some other stabilized versions of vitamin 
vitamin C that's available on the market. And like I say, it will work for a range of skin types. That's why it's on this list. And I tend to travel with this one. If I know that I'm not going to be keeping my vitamin C in the fridge, if I'm not going to be as cautious with it, you know, keeping it out of direct sunlight and all of that that I normally would to prevent oxidation, I just travel with this. You don't need to worry about all of that because the stabilized form of this key ingredient just kind of takes all the hassle and worry out of it. It's a really, really nice vitamin C. Now in seventh position, we have this, The Ordinary Pycnogenol. Now for some reason, this is in a 50 ml bottle, whereas all of the others are either in a 30 or a 50 ml. It's a little bit frustrating. I would wish that The Ordinary would do a larger size of this because I do get through it. Um, again, this was a product that was on last year's list and is again on this year's list because Pycnogenol is one of my favorite antioxidants. So like all other antioxidants, it protects against free radicals, things like UV wavelengths of light, particulate matter, blue light, pollution, things that hit our skin. Those free radicals stress out our skin, degrade collagen, and can trigger premature aging. Everyone needs a good antioxidant in their skincare routine, and pycnogenol is fairly unique because it actually binds to and protects collagen. So if you're worried about fine lines and wrinkles, that loss of firmness and elasticity in the skin, make sure you've got a pycnogenol in your routine. This one is a little bit on the oilier side, and it comes in this really rich color. So what I would recommend doing is putting a drop or two of it in your moisturizer and then applying it to the skin. That way I find it penetrates better. That color doesn't tend to pull around the hairline like sometimes it can if you pre-mix it with your moisturizer and you still get that really great antioxidant benefit. It's only 15 mil and I think I paid like eight pounds for it. So like mil for mil, it is one of the more expensive of the ordinary products, but totally, totally worth it. And if you try to get Pycnogenol from another brand, you'll probably be paying two or three times as much. This is drugstore, affordable, and one of my favorite, favorite antioxidants. Now in sixth position is a product that definitely didn't feature last year because it didn't actually exist. This is the ordinary salicylic acid 2% solution. I'm going to call like a joint sixth place because they do the ordinary solution and they also do the anhydrous solution. It depends on your skin type as to which one you go for. So I personally tend to reach for this one more frequently. This is the water-based one. It's great if you have an oily or acne-prone skin type. That's because it does tend to mop up some of that excess oil. It can be a little bit drying on the skin. Definitely beneficial if your skin is overproducing that oil. However, if you have a drier skin type and you still want to use a salicylic acid to go into the pores, flush out the dirt, the debris, and the blackheads, reach for the anhydrous solution that's oil-based so it'll hydrate at the same time as having all those great salicylic acid benefits. It's really important to match to your skin type, and I did a review of the anhydrous solution explaining a bit more in a video, which again, I'm gonna link up there. For me, this is definitely a worthy sixth position on this list, and around three years ago, it was discontinued, which lost a lot of people suffering with acne, brain breakouts and heavy congestion on the skin, kind of looking around the market for a really good alternative. Very few of the products actually lived up to this original one. They brought it back and I actually think it's better. This is less stripping, drying and irritating than the original formulation. So I definitely think it was worth waiting those like two or three years for them to bring this back in a much improved form. Now, let's give a big drum roll, please, for the top five, what I call like the best of the best. And we started with another new launch. I think if I look back, a lot of the products in this list weren't in last year's list because they weren't around at that time. Certainly that salicylic acid and also this product. This is the Audrey Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum. So I did an initial first impressions of this, which I'm gonna leave a link to up there, but I've now been using it like four or five months. And I've definitely noticed a difference. It takes a little bit of time to work on the lashes. I'd say that I didn't start to see any change for like four months. So you do have to have a bit of patience. But on the brows, within like 30 days, they were fuller. They were just easier to tame as well, which was an unexpected benefit that I definitely enjoyed. This is super affordable. I think I paid, I'm on like tube number three or four of this now, and I think I paid like eight or nine pounds for it. So when you compare and contrast it to other lash and brow growth serums that can be upwards of like a hundred dollars or more, this is definitely affordable and it delivers. You know, it's not gonna give you that instant result. You have to have a little bit of patience, but but if you're someone that wants to you know, achieve a little bit more fullness in the brow, a little extra length on the lashes, this is a really affordable product to reach for. I like the applicator, you know, you can kind of do a bit more precise work with it so it doesn't get all over the skin like some of those like spoolie applicators do. This more, much, much more precision. And yeah, I just think it's a really, really good product and a great addition to their skincare line. Even though I was pretty skeptical when they announced that it was coming, I've been totally won over and I love it. Now, I promised you earlier on that there will be a second vitamin C mentioned in this list and in fourth place is this. This is the ordinary ascorbic acid 8% alpha arbutin 2%. 
a wonderful, wonderful product, which I think is totally deserving of a place in this top five. The reason I really enjoy this is it combines a really, what is relatively a low strength of ascorbic acid with alpha arbutin. So you're going to dial up the benefits you're going to get, but because it's using a lower concentration of ascorbic acid, you get less redness, prickling, and sensitivity. So if you're someone that's kind of a bit scared to go near pure or active form vitamin Cs for those reasons, reach for this. I got very few side effects, even though my skin is relatively sensitive to vitamin C and I got some great results. The alpha arbutin is such a wonderful ingredient it's going to dial up that pigment fighting ability of this product even everything out and over time I definitely noticed that my post acne hyperpigmentation is a lot less pronounced. The marks that I do get fade much quicker than they used to and this is definitely definitely a product I've been going back to time and time again. Team all of those benefits with like the seven pounds price tag. I mean what is not to love when you consider a lot of vitamin C's these days can command like 50, 60, 70 pound prices. This works just as well for a fraction of the cost, which is why it is definitely staying in this list. Now, in joint third and second place are these two. I can't distinguish between them because I use them together and love them. We've got the Ordinary Matrixyl and the Ordinary Azuraline. Now, this will come as a shock to literally nobody that's watched this channel over the past 12 months because I've been fangirling about this powerful anti-aging combination for the longest possible time. I'm not going to go on about it too much in this video because I did a separate video about the benefits of using these together, how to layer them in your skincare routine, and all of that so I'll leave a link to that up there but you use these two together which I think collectively they cost like 12 or 13 pounds so it doesn't break the bank and you get some amazing anti-aging results. I put a little bit of the Azure line on the forehead creases that I get on the laughter lines and on the crow's feet. I'll then go on with a mixture of both of these across the whole face again. You get that targeted anti-wrinkle action, you get some instant plumping, it hydrates you to the gods and in the long term it can boost collagen and elastin production. Like all of those benefits for like 12, 13 pounds, it just doesn't get better than this. And I crowned the Azure line as like my favorite anti-aging serum of 2022. And you can dial it up a notch by adding in the Matrixel too. Now the final drum roll please for a product which is definitely worthy of that gold star first place position. For those of you that have been around with the channel sometime, you're probably already screaming its name and you can probably guess, but it's this, the Ordinary Lactic Acid 10%. Now this has a special place in my heart because for years people were saying, give lactic acid a go Rob honestly you'll love it and I kept thinking why why would I go down a notch from the more higher potency glycolic acids that I was using to lactic acid well sometimes like strength power and concentration aren't the full story and you can actually switch from glycolic acid which has a reputation for being a more robust exfoliator to lactic acid and get better results this is definitely what happened with me I made the switch coming up for like a year now and my glow game has gone through the roof with it my skin confidence and I credit it all to lactic acid. This has been wonderful for just smoothing everything out, evening out and fading my hyperpigmentation alongside the vitamin C's, the antioxidants and the alpha arbutin that I've been using. And I definitely feel that I get an enhanced glow from lactic acid than I ever got from glycolic acid. I think glycolic acid can be quite irritating on the skin, particularly the higher strength concentrations. It can also dry out the skin too in a way that lactic acid won't because it's a humectant. So if you think you're using an exfoliator that irritates, inflames and dries out the skin. Is it any wonder that my skin wasn't glowing? Switch to lactic acid. I get all the great exfoliation benefits, none of the drawbacks. So I would say if you're still out there clinging onto your glycolic acid, make the switch. Go to lactic acid. Your skin will love you. There are two different strengths here. I'm focusing on the 10%, which I think works for just about everybody. But if you have a very, very sensitive skin type, then you might want to start with the 5% and see how your skin gets on. You'll still get really great results, but I think most people can probably start with the 10% without too many issues. Listen to what your skin's saying. Don't use it every single day. A couple of times a week is all you need. But this is my favorite from The Ordinary of 2022 and a worthy, worthy winner. So guys, what are your thoughts? Would you change anything in this list? Don't forget, these are just my thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and you guys probably have your own. So sound off in the comments section below. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.